Good morning and welcome back to What's Mike Doing? So today we're going to do a quick little tutorial, kind of, I got a buddy on Facebook that reached out and asked me about uh, his Mooney overheating. So I was texting back and forth and gave him some ideas and one of the ideas we're going to show here because I explained it, his name's Rene, he's in Germany. Um, and it's, he's got a new panel in the airplane, it looks pretty sweet. But he does have his number three cylinder overheating um, and it's reaching up, he showed me pictures, it's reaching up to about like 430 degrees, something like that. So anything over 400 degrees, you start getting into territory where you can do some damage. Uh, so, these Moonies, particularly the doghouse, <clears throat> which is that inner baffling I was showing you uh, underneath the cowl, normally uh, on other aircraft, the top cowling piece directs the airflow down and through the cylinders. On the Mooney, I'll get the cowl off and show you that it has the inner cowling, or baffling rather, and that inner baffling directs the airflow down through the cylinders. If you have any leaks in that baffling, as it's old or it's rattled a little loose or bent or drilled holes that are now unused, any escaping air will reduce the cooling effectiveness. Okay? Pretty much the only reason we have a hole in the front of that airplane, in the front of the cowling, is for <clears throat> cooling airflow. If, you, if we didn't need cooling airflow, we wouldn't have a hole in the front of the airplane at all because it's drag and we don't want drag. So we're actually gonna, you know, generally, again, the Moonies have a big old gaping hole in the front there. Mine actually has a, a cowling enclosure that reduces that, reduces drag, increases cooling. Um, they found that when they test flew these after manufacture, um, not so much test flowing, uh, flying, but when they flew these, they found that the air was ramming in, there's so much air ramming in that it was creating some kind of, I don't know, lack of a better word, a vortex, and the air is coming back out, so we're losing our cooling air. So let's have a look at that real quick, and then I'll, uh, I'll take the cowling off and get into it. So basically this big hole here, it's usually lower. Uh, that lower air, that, that lower cowl let even more air in there. Um, and that more air created more drag and the air was coming out. So we need to make sure that every little bit of air that goes in here stays in there and goes through the cylinder. If it's not going through the cylinder, then it's not cooling anything. Uh, it's just drag and like I said on these Moonies particularly, every bit of air going in there needs to be used for cooling uh, or we end up with hotter temperatures. Also we have down here on the Mooney, we have these cowl flaps and they come down and allow more air in. Let me climb up there. Pull that cowl flap out. And you'll see here that it comes down. This allows more air, air to come through and escape, and hopefully cooling it down even more. Okay, so <clears throat> what we have now is I got the cowl off, so I'll give you a look. We'll get a little closer. So this is a bit better view of what's going on. The air goes in there, goes through these cylinders, goes over the top of the cylinders, then goes down, just like air going through a motorcycle cylinder head, or even a lawnmower, all of those things all need airflow to keep the head cool. Um, some motorcycles are water-cooled, etc. cetera. Um, there's actually a car that was air-cooled with Volkswagen and a Chevrolet Corvair, both air-cooled uh, car engine. There's probably more out there too that I don't know of. So basically what we're going to do, turn the lights out in the hangar, then we're going to put a bright light in here and have a look around the cowl 
or sorry, the baffling, to see if we can see any light coming out. If we see light coming out, um, then we will know that we have a, a, a leaking issue um, of our cooling air. So let me get that set up and then I'll show you. Okay, we're lights out in the hangar. Um, so if the video quality goes down a little bit, uh, please forgive me. We gotta do this though, so we can see what's up. So I got a bright light in here. The, the cylinder that Renee is talking about is cylinder number three. That's the one he has overheating. So that's the one we're kind of going to focus on in this. Cause then, uh, when he looks at what he, his engine, he'll kind of understand what we're looking at here. Oops. A light there. And that is this hole here. So we got a leak there. We have another leak there. So that is where <clears throat> typically where you might have a leak too, if this um, magneto leads are not plugged up very well. Now you can see my baffling is really tight around here. Typically though, you're going to see light come through there because that's going to be a pretty bad quality seal. This is all brand new and I specifically made sure it was super tight there. So underneath the engine mount, you're going to typically find leakage too. I'll get the top of that, um, the doghouse off, turn the lights back on, and then I'll point out where the, the leaks could be for Renee with the lights on. It's easier to see, obviously. Uh, by the way, just a little plug for <clears throat> a manufacturer of a product. Uh, this guy here, I bought this at uh, Air Venture in Oshkosh two years, three years ago. Anyways, there's the company name, grypsgripshawn.com. This thing's super cool. Like you set it anywhere on the airplane, you put your nuts and bolts and tools in it, it holds it there. It's flexible, like um, grip, it's not grippy. It's not grippy per se, but it's, it's kind of stays, you know, and molds to wherever you put it. So anyways, I've, it's not a sponsor. I've had that product for two years. I really enjoy using it. Typically we don't have that top piece on there. Uh, you just have, on other airplanes, you just have the top piece there. <clears throat> and then you have an arrangement that looks like this, but there's more rubber, like the baffling material here, would come up here, go along the edge, and the backside. And then that whole cowling acts as the director of airflow <clears throat> through the cylinders. So this is what I was showing on the outside, how I said that it was all new. I spent a lot of time sealing up this back part here. Typically though, you can have, you know, when I was, oh, when I was pulling this thing apart initially, this here, there were big old, big old gaps. So if you have a look at where the metal ends and how much rubber there is covering that gap, it's a pretty big gap. And so originally they had this felt material, like actual fabric-y felt that covered this gap. And so um, I actually just overlapped it a couple of times. The airflow helped push all this back and down and seal it up pretty good. 
And then as you go down underneath this, you get further down and I have more ceiling going on there. Because if you don't, any little air escaping through anything here, any holes, they're going to reduce the cooling effect. Okay? <clears throat> so that's just something to, to keep in mind. So there's a lot of other things that can cause a cylinder to overheat. Um, a, this is just one singular item, so I figured I'd make one video on this. Some other things are your oil cooler not flowing very well, not cooling right. The vernatherm, which is what sends oil to the cooler when the oil temperature gets to a temperature where it's getting too warm, it'll then divert oil to the cooler. So if that's not operating right, not set right, typically they're not, I don't believe the one on this engine is adjustable, um, but sometimes you can shim them out and whatnot to change the temperature of when the oil goes. Also, the cowl flaps, uh, they did come out with Moonies that didn't have cowl flaps earlier ones, so that can be an issue whether they're opening up not opening up enough, uh, etc. Also, down here, uh, where the, we have lighting issues again. All right, down here, this bit of ba uh, baffling material. You can see I have a kink in mine right here, something to address. But this seals up the bottom it seals against here. So any air going in here and in here, we don't want it escaping down there. That's lack of air pressure. Also this seal here that goes around, that seal there that goes around the alternator generator, that needs to be sealed up tight. This here, the seal around the starter Right there, that needs to be sealed up tight. So, anywhere in that baffling that you're losing air, no matter how small, needs to be sealed up. So, go over your cowling. If you're having overheating issues, the first thing you're gonna do, the most basic thing, it's kinda like if you have a TV that's not working, the first thing you check to see if it's plugged in. If you have an airplane that's overheating, first thing you gotta do is check your baffling. And don't be like, ah, it's, it's okay, that, that looks fine. Like, if it's not fine, it's not fine. That needs to be perfect. Every little bit counts, okay? So, that's all I got for you. If you have any other tips for Rene, throw them in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Let's help this guy out, get his airplane cooled down. Until the next video, have a good one.